What's up, people? I am back. Um, if you're hearing a lot of water drops, it's because it's raining hard as fuck over here. So, I just kind of want to pre-warn you. Um, but other than that, today, I am reviewing... Not reviewing anything, actually. I am going to be listing my favorite horror sequels. I got this idea when I, I saw one of the channels I follow do it. Do one of their own. And it's going to be specifically two, number two. I'll eventually, maybe down the line, do a three. Because I think there are some good third movies, but definitely want to do two. So, felt like doing this today, and then tomorrow, I'll be doing... Um, I guess before I get into this, we'll go into what I got planned for the week. Today, this video. Tomorrow, um... The Devil's Rejects, which I cannot wait. I love that movie. I love House, Devil, um, House of the Thousand Corpses, but Devil's Rejects to me was such a bad movie. When I, I remember watching that the first time and just being like, holy shit. So yeah, that's going to be um, reviewing that. And then um, Wednesday I'm doing... Um, this is going to be a kind of watching blind, but... I figured we're kind of get back to doing a couple of Stallone movies I haven't seen. So I figure I'll check this one out, Nighthawk. So I'll check that one out. I have no idea what this movie is even about or anything like that. So it's going to be kind of just going in blind with that one. And then Thursday, I'm doing the final of the Texas Chainsaw movies. We already did the 2022 one. Um, I'm reviewing the, the 2017 Leatherface. That was another one I'm going in blind. I really hope it's better than the fucking 20, the one we watched last week. This holy shit, that was bad. So I'm hoping this one is at least decent. I, I'm not expecting it obviously anywhere great as the, the, you know, let's say the original or the 2003 movie. Sorry, hold on. Auto play happened. Sorry. Fucking hell. I was listening to music earlier. And just, yeah, just auto play. But anyway. Um, but yeah. Um, so I hope it's decent at least. So, um, and then Friday, I am, I'm thinking about, I don't fully know what I got, I'm doing Friday, but I am planning to see the new Ger Ger blah, Gerard Butler movie, um, Plane, I think that's what it's called, which is, the name is terrible, but the trailer, I remember watching it like a month ago, I'm like, this looks kind of fun, I'm not expecting, I'm not saying it's going to be great or anything, but it looked like just a fun little action movie, you know, so I was like, I'm like, I'm going to go see this, so I'll probably go see it, and if it's worth talking about, I'll review it. If not, I'll do something else on Friday, but yeah, or on the weekend if I don't do it Friday, but yeah, let's get started. My top 10 horror sequels, and I think there's been a lot of great horror sequels, especially specifically number two. I think there's been so many great ones, so I figured why not talk about it, um, but no further ado, I'm going to get ready to kick it off here. We're going to start with number 10. <coughs> number <coughs> number 10, and I consider this a horror movie, Jaws 2. You know, the sequel to the 1975 classic Jaws. And I look at it as a great, and there's going to be a theme with a lot of my sequels. It's basically number one, it's going to be <laughs> they took the story and furthered it. I think Jaws 2 does that perfectly. And I consider Jaws 2 a horror, Jaws a horror movie, so. And, yeah, it's just, like, I think, obviously there's some problems with it, and I, I'll agree it's nowhere near as great as the first Jaws, but I think, my opinion, I think it's underrated, and I think it's, honestly, for me, it ends the story of Jaws. For me, the canon story of Jaws ends with this movie. But what I think it does great is I love what they do with um, 
with Brody in this movie. I really love his whole kind of like PTSD kind of argument. Is like, I am not trying to, he doesn't want to be dealing with, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, but he doesn't want to be dealing with like, um, you know, going through that hell again, you know? And it's like, you understand his position. I, like I said, I still think there, there are some issues. I think like the town, the level of skepticism against him is a bit over the top. I'll agree with that. Like, I think the level of like, hold on. But yeah, like the level of uh, skepticism is a bit over the top. And it sucks we don't get a lot more of the mayor, but I think he continues the story great. It furthers it. And in my opinion, it, it, it this is where you can watch you can watch like Jaws one and two as a two parter, and it works fine. But I, I think it in the music, in my opinion, is one of the best. I almost think it like I love the music in the first movie, but I think like Jaws two almost like furthers it with the music. So love Jaws two. So that's my number ten. My number nine, and this is gonna be interesting because this is like a more newer movie, literally newer. Like this movie just came out, Terrifier two. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Terrifier 2 was like a really another example. Like it, it felt like a classic horror sequel. Like I said, the only real pot negative is it should not have been two hours. I think you could have kind of kept it under two. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Um, you could have kept it under like an hour and a half, but whatever. That doesn't ruin the movie or anything. The way they further the story with art. I love the lead in it. Um, um, or, uh, hold on, I'm gonna go look up, look up really quick. Never mind. Um, but the lead is great. I like that they do try to put more of a story in there. I can respect it. They were like, you know, the first one was a bit more killy, which this one is still very killy. The kills are, I don't get into that in a second, but I really do like it. They do try to at least give it a little bit of a story, you know? They don't, I like that they still... They further art story, but they also don't in the same way, like in in the same vein. Like they don't like further in the sense that you feel like you're getting too much of. You don't know what art's about yet. You still don't. Two movies in, we don't fully know what art is. But I, the the introduction of the little pale girls creepy, and yeah, the kills alone. I mean, they this the example the number one example for what a horror sequel should do is specifically horror and mainly slasher if you're gonna go specifically slasher is you gotta amplify the kills and i think this movie does that in spades like this movie does that like the kills in this is like holy shit even like the scene where he stabs the dude in the nuts i'm sorry i'm not gonna lie as someone who most things don't get me i'll admit it i i you know it, it is hard sorry about that sorry about the very loud water um but most things don't get me like that. And that got me. It's like, holy shit. So yeah, this definitely, this is how you do a horror sequel. And, you know, I'm definitely hyped for more. But yeah, that, that, that's besides the point. I'm focusing mainly on this is how you do a good horror sequel. So that is my number eight, nine. Number eight is Phantasm 2. I, I think, um, like with Terrifier, I, th I, love this, I love this one. This is... More one I just, I not just watched, but like watched within the last, I guess, six months. Um, but the Phantasm, Phantasm 2 was great. I love how it's 10 years later and it picks right up from where the first one ends and then it jumps a little bit. We get older fucking Mike, who, yeah, it's not the same actor from the other movies. That's the, but I think he does a decent job and you can almost, it, it almost is believable. Because it's like how weird, how weird and kind of out there Phantasm is. To, so, you know, how weird and out there Phantasm is. That it's like, it works. That, yeah, it's a different actor. We can kind of just accept it, you know. And I think it works. Like, overall, Anger Scrim still kills it. I love that you get a little bit more about the, um, the tall man, but not fully... Um, I love the dynamic between Reggie and Mike. It's still there. I love that kind of in the beginning of it, it does like, it's just a straight up continuation of the second movie, the original. And some of the newer characters they bring in aren't terrible. And yeah, I think um, it's a solid sequel. It, it, that they, they don't, 
fully go into what the uh, the tall man is in any of these movies, but the second one is such a nice pickup point. So yeah, this definitely had to be on my list, and this is definitely one I just put on, like in the sense of this is a newer one. I'll admit it. Like if you had asked me months ago, this probably would not have been on my list. A different movie would have, but eh. <laughs> but uh number seven is nightmare on elm street two <laughs> it's weird because this one i normally would put higher but just compared to some of the other sequels i'm gonna mention <clears throat> um, and it's weird because I know a lot of people hate this movie. This is a very unpopular opinion in the Nightmare fandom, you know. <clears throat> you know, that Nightmare 2 is liked. But, yeah, there's a lot of weird gay shit. And I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say, like, homoerotic, if you're gonna use that word, you know. <clears throat> I mean, you even have, like, the main character, Jesse, who literally leaves the party after hooking up with his girlfriend. To go hang out, to, to go to his friend's house, and I would sleep over. I, I, you know, I get it. You know, there's the old gay club scene, and it breaks rules. So even just taking that aspect out of it, and just focusing on this movie broke rules, and I agree. But, I will say this. I, I fucking love it. I love Freddy in this movie. And this is what I'll admit. Freddy specifically is why I love this movie. I love how it... I'll admit in that aspect, yeah, it's not... I guess you could ar you could almost argue this shouldn't be on the list because it doesn't further the story because it almost is like a pause and then you get three that really almost feels like a true sequel. But I love Freddy in this and I love the tone. Like, bit, take out the weird homoerotic stuff. Just the horror tone. Freddy is scary as fuck in this movie. Like, I, I, like that opening scene... Where we first see, well, not opening scene, even the opening scene, but the scene where I'm meant to say where Jesse first sees him in, like, truly. Um, I love how violent and dark Freddy is. It just has, like, such a dark tone, and it continues the story. I think decently enough, like, it still feels like a sequel. It works for me. I, I almost, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of fine with the idea that Nancy's just gone. And we don't know where she went. And then we're focusing on a different group of characters in the same house. So I think it works for me still. So that's my number seven. Number six, Final Destination 2. And this is a weird one. This is one that's like probably the, the non-slasher of it. But I love this movie. I remember re-watching this last year. I just... I remember why I loved it. I'm like, I remember like that always being the one Final Destination movie of the, the main ones. All of it, I think the only one I didn't see was five. It was either five or, no, it was five and four I didn't really see. I think I seen the first three. But I really loved Final Destination 2. I love that it, it, like, you could watch Final Destination 1 and 2 just back to back. And, you know, because you have clear... The, the character the newer characters are decent the kills are amplified I love the the scene in the car where they tie it to basically back to the first film that all these characters survived and it caused the events of what ended up happening I love that I love that shit um I love how kind of just batshit it is in terms of the kills like the fucking scene in the road man where just all the fucking the, the, the log scene, the whole collision scene, even the scene in, like, towards the end when um the, the, the crackhead guy got killed. And, yeah, it's just the, the movie in itself is just a good sequel. And the characters are likable. And, yeah, so now we're now on to the top five. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Number five, the um, Friday the 13th, part two. In my opinion, this is the movie that, this is the one, this, in, probably in my list, I would argue, is the one sequel that surpasses the original. I've talked about this before. <clears throat> I think the original Friday the 13th isn't that great. I think it's a, I can watch it, but it's not a good movie. If we're taking, like, <clears throat> if we're just being honest, like, if I'm just being honest, like, as a movie, it is not good. I think the lead sucks. <clears throat> I guess side rant about the original Friday. Not necessarily a rant, but just I think the lead sucks. It is paced weird. The kills are good. I love the first person kills. And then the Pamela reveal is great. But I think that's all we kind of get is the Pamela reveal, which is like the last, like, what, 10 minutes? If that even... Like I guess I would say 10 minutes. Maybe last 15 minutes, all even. Last 15, 10 to 15 minutes, basically. The last bit of the movie. And yeah, I think this movie, why I also really love Friday the 13th Part 2, is just it builds on the lore in such a big way. Not just with the introduction of Jason. We learn a bit more about the camp. You know, Jason Shack. I think this one has a way better lead. Ginny is a far more interesting character than fucking Alice. Alice was terrible. I think that's another reason I didn't really like the first Friday. Or at least mostly. I can watch it. I still think it's a watchable movie. I just think this one, like, takes it and just runs it home. You know, like, this one, like, furthers it. Like, it furthers the story. Um, Even that scene where um, um the counselor guy was going into the the story of Jason... Just that it sets the mood. That to even to the point they even reuse that clip for I think part four. So I, I just love this movie. I love the chase scene. It is a little slapsticky. Like I'll admit, like Jason's kind of bumbling full at times, like he's tripping over himself. But to be fair, this wasn't Jason. Like he didn't have a hockey mask yet. This was um sack Jason. Um I think this one, um, well, overall, like, the final chase is great. Um, the kills are solid. And, yeah, it, it does what a sequel is supposed to do. It builds on the story. And you have a really likable lead, in my opinion. So I love Friday Part 2. Um, so that's my number five. Number four is Evil Dead 2. In my opinion, I can I can understand if this is, if there was this, like, if I, like, put this list out there i can see this being a lot of people's favorite sequel for a horror sequel evil dead 2 i think this one i wouldn't blame them i love the tone it's like alien and aliens right like the original evil dead is a straight a bit more like a straightforward horror movie that is more serious whereas this one amps up the cheat i think there's still horror i'm not necessarily saying that that there isn't horror in evil dead 2 but I think it's definitely a bit more on the, the amp of the comedy. But this movie gives us the ash we all know. And just that scene, man, when he gears up, he gets the shotgun. He makes his fucking hand, his robot hand, and the chainsaw. It's like, yes, <laughs> this is the ash we know. But even just Bruce's performance he was acting by like for like the first 30 minutes really yeah they like they do cut to the other characters every now and then but mainly it was bruce acting by himself in the fucking cabin you know that scene where he's having that like freak out before you know he loses his hand it, it's like and just i love this movie sam Raimi went all out with the sequel and i just i fucking love it, it the the final act is awesome the Ash, we know the 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 fucking Deadites are great. It adds to the lore, like a sequel is supposed to do. And like I said, just said, it gives us the Ash we basically all know. You know the the fast talking, chainsaw hand wielding, shotgun using Ash. So, and then that final act, man. Before and then we get to the ending. 
when it sets up Army of Darkness is so awesome. And just the final act itself, when he's fighting the fucking tree monster, I fucking love it. Like, it's just so good. And the characters are good. Yeah, man. I, I think Evil Dead 2 is a fucking great one. So, yeah. I, I had to put this on the list. Like, there's no way I couldn't. So, number three, Scream 2. I think Scream 2, like the original Scream, you know, it's supposed to be like a commentary on horror movies. This one's a commentary on sequels, and I think it does it perfectly. The cast in general is great. Like, I'd argue this one probably of the all the movies had easily the fucking biggest cast. I mean, well, even though they died in the beginning, Omar Epps was a pretty big name in the mid '90s at that point. Um, as much as I fucking despise her, the truth of the matter, she was a name at the time. Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, it's Sarah Michelle Geller. This was, she was at the height of Buffy. She just did uh, the text, uh, not Texas. I know what you did last summer. I think that same year. Yeah, it was a, man, a lot of big names in that movie. Lee Schreiber's in it. Like, yeah. But just besides that, I love the opening in this. Like, you know, yeah, it's not as iconic, let's say, like as that first movie, but that was still a great opening nonetheless. Them at the theater. It still had that realistic feel about it where, you know, um, she's, uh, Jada's getting killed at the theater and and uh, like, it just it had that realistic feel with the crowd. I mean, obviously the biggest mistake, I agree with most people, is then, not necessarily, it's not them killing Randy, I think I would have been fine with him dying. I just don't think he should have died in the middle of the film. I think if he had died in like the final act, I would have been cool with that. As much as I love the character, I would have been cool killing him if he had died like in the final act, not in like the middle of the movie, how they did it. But besides that, I fucking love Scream 2. I love Sydney's story. I love that it like it's in a college, you know, you gotta change up the setting. Yeah. Would it have been cool if they had did Woodsboro again? But it makes sense. You know, she's going to college, trying to live her life, trying to move on. She has a new boyfriend. I get Okay, I'll throw in another negative. I do not like, not necessarily Derek. I, I would have been fine with her having a boyfriend. And it's weird. Because I like, I like Jerry O'Connell as an actor. I don't think he fit this. He doesn't fit this world. When I was watching, every, like, any time, like, I'll admit, I didn't notice this as much when I was first watching it, but like a lot of the last few years noticing it, maybe this is, I think I, someone I watched pointed it out. I'm like, he doesn't fit this universe. He really doesn't. That scene in the, the fucking, and I don't want to go into too much into criticism. At the end of the day, this is top 10, so I got to keep it positive, but I'll just point this out really quick. That scene in the, 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 um, the cafeteria where you sit yet. You don't need that. But aside from him, I love Timothy Oliphant is great as the killer. Um, the final act's really good. It's such a solid continuation of the story. It grows on Sydney's character, but not just Sydney, all of everybody's character, you know? It grows everybody. It does what it like common theme with a lot of these movies. It does what a good sequel is supposed to do and build on the story. So yeah, Scream 2 in my is such a great sequel to me. I always I love it. It's definitely, to me, the second best of the franchise, and yet yeah, it's perfect. Like, it's such a perfect follow-up to the first one. Like, you know, the first one, like I mentioned, you know, commentary on horror movies. The second one's a commentary on sequels. Such a logical next step, right? You know? So, Scream 2. Number two is Child's Play 2. I, I, I fucking love this movie. This is the movie that... I, I almost say I watch this more than the first one. I'd wager. There are times I can just watch this one by itself. I love the original Chucky. I think on a if you're gonna really press me, the original is a way better film. But this one to me is probably my favorite of the franchise. I just I something about Child's Play 2 just always gets me. It's like one, I like the aspect that Andy is now by himself. He doesn't have his mom. Don't worry, I love his mom. I think she was a great character in the first movie, and she worked for that movie. 
But I like the idea that okay, now he's on his own. His, they think his mom's crazy, so she she's not fit. They think, well, she's not fit to take care of him. You know, so he's in a foster. He just goes from different foster homes, you know. And I actually think Alex Vincent did such a good job in this, too, because it's like, I actually think he's he's acting like steps up, stepped up. Like, I think he's good in the first, but I think, like, he stepped it up in this one. He felt believable every scene he's in. You, you feel for him, man. And I like, cause it's because he's by himself. You know, yeah, you get Kyle later on, but that's not to wait, like, close to the final act, basically, when Kyle gets involved to where she starts believing him. I mean, I guess throughout the film a little bit, she's always been on his side, especially the scene where the foster dad was just right, which the foster parents were assholes, which I love. It, it, it works for the movie, in my opinion. You know, it's believable. You know, I can believe people like that exist where they, oh, this kid's a problem, you know. Um, I like the school scene. I think I would have, I would not have minded that if we had got a little bit more of the school, school but I love that old school sequence. Him killing the teacher with the fucking ruler is hilarious. And yeah, like I said, it's the Chucky we know. We get a lot of the Chucky-isms that we, we know. I would argue you could watch like this one, uh, the first one and this one back to back. Like, it, it works perfectly. Just these two. I mean, like I said, I still think three's decent, but just specifically one and two, you can just watch back to back because Alex Vincent... It, it works. Um, I love the final act at the the factory. I think Kyle's a good character. Yeah. A, a great sequel. Very great sequel. So now, before I get to my number one. Number one, which to be fair, it's not, you're not going to be shocked just considering how much I really love this franchise. Halloween 2. I think to me, this is the perfect horror sequel. The fact that it takes place the same night and it has that, even though it came out a couple years after the original, like I would say, I think three. Yeah, about three because this was 81. But the way they're able to make it feel like the same night, yeah, you you kind of, there's little things you got to get over. Like, yeah, the mask looks way different. Like, it still looks the same. Like, it still has that same um, Shatner shape, but it's definitely wider. Because, you know, I think if I remember right, the original story was the mask was either in, like, some kind of storage or it was in, like, under somebody's couch. So that's why, like, it looks all, like, weird and, like, wider and you know bloated kind of if you're gonna use that word oh yeah the mask looks like almost bloated he has a different like michael has a different like cover all overall but it's like who cares like that little thing like that i can get over i love that it takes place right after like it literally minutes down to the moment like you get like in almost like a different view of what you see like of michael getting shot out of the window it's like almost an alternate view you didn't see in the original and then you even see like Dr. Loomis go downstairs and I love that intro. And it's, you don't know what death is and then the music hits. And it's weird because I'll admit, when I first watched this movie, I love the movie. I did not like the song at first. I was like, it's all like, it's. I didn't like the synthy sound at first. I was like, it sounded like, I was thinking at the time, like it sounds like fucking like either Sega or fucking Nintendo music. I'm like, why is it? It's weird. But... It grew on me. Like, if you actually just sit down and listen to it, the Halloween 2 theme, it's like, it has this, like, it's synthy, but it's creepy. Because there's a lot of creepy background sounds to it, and it works. And it works for the movie. And just that hospital setting is great. I love there's not a lot of patients. I'm actually happy they that was a smart decision that they went with. Not to have a lot of people running around the hospital, like a lot of the electricity's out. It's just black almost at times, and just the shots of just Michael just walk like creeping in the in the hallways, and like you would see on the video camera, like on the security guards camera, you just see Michael just walking, 
in like in this black and white like video. It just looks so good. The kills are like like you know they amp up the kills a little bit. Like you started seeing blood. Um, I I like that they're related. I I know this is one of those that I I, I get that some people don't like. They, there are people out there who never like the whole them being related thing. But I did. I I think to me this is the true follow up to the original. I don't fucking care. I like 2018 and I like Kill still, but to me this is the ultimately the true canon follow up to Halloween Two. It just so and it, I love like the scene where he's just walking. Is so like when he um, bumps into the kid and then the music hits and he's just walking to the hospital with a purpose. Like that's why I love this movie. It's like Michael is like involved too. Like in the first one, you still had like little moments where you could kind of not humanity, but like the way he moved even. He moved like a robot. Like Dick Warlock went with like a more robotic movement for Michael, and it works because like at this point, Michael is just straight up pure evil. I mean, yeah, you could argue pure evil in the first one, but like full out this time around like he is pure evil after being shot out of that window he is not that same michael he is like evolved and just that scene where he's about to chase Lori, which that chase scene is great i love that chase scene in the end when he chases Lori through the hospital with like some of the red lighting it's so good and but yeah before that he stabs the nurse and then he like lifts her with one hand with a scalpel i'm like bruh yeah, Michael's a force in this movie. That's why I love it. And I can agree to people, like, and I love the later movies, but I can understand people who say, like, this could be their ending. You know, this works as the ending. Michael dies in the fire, you know. Overall, though, this is a perfect horror sequel. So, yeah, this had to be my number one. So, yeah, I'm happy to have done this video. I, I think there have been a lot of good horror sequels, but... Yeah, these are my top ten. Um, I will eventually be thinking about maybe doing a number three because I think there's some good number threes. Friday Part Three, um, Nightmare Part uh, Nightmare Three, you know, Dream Warriors. So I think there's some good threes out there. So I'll eventually do do a video about that. Scream Three, even I'll do. I'll throw in there. So yeah, I don't know when I'll do it, but it'll be some point. But yeah, I I, I wanted to do this video. I kind of when when I saw. Um, Drum Dub, that's the channel who um, who did uh, his own number horror sequels. I felt like when I saw that, I'm like, I kind of wanted to do my own. So, yeah, so I wanted to get that out there. And I figured try to do something different, and, you know, that's not a review. I'm thinking this week, I don't know when, but it'll be sometime this week. I am going to do a rant about slave movie i've been kind of wanting to do this video for a while but i just never had the time and just didn't know when to do it but i figure since a we're getting close to black history month which i think is stupid but anyway side point uh i want to talk about why i'm over slave movies and not just slave movies. If, if that'll be like the main point but it, i'm gonna include like jim crow movies too in that so I'm, I might do that tomorrow, even. I don't know when tomorrow, but it'll be some point tomorrow I'll talk about it. It'll be this week if I don't do it tomorrow, but yeah. I want to get that out there, but yeah, you know, I, I you know, it's like, don't worry, I love my reviews, but it's nice sometimes throwing in videos that are not reviews, so I wanted to get this list out there, but my main video tomorrow will be The Devil's Rejects, which I can't wait to talk about. I think that's such a good movie. That's arguably Rob's best. For me, it's his best. I, but I can understand people who say House of a Thousand Corpses. But I think this one furthers that story great. I haven't seen Three from Hell. Originally, this was the end of ending of that story, but then they did then Rob did Three from Hell. So if we're gonna check that out next Tuesday. I'll talk about that more tomorrow. But I think there have been a lot of good horror sequels. If you, if none of you have not seen, I don't know. I wouldn't know why though. I feel like most people who watch this channel have seen at least a form of these movies out that i've listed but if you haven't i definitely recommend them they're all great so but uh i'm gonna cheers out and i'll talk to y'all tomorrow
Not Joe Biden. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Peace.